Chevrolet's little Trax is yet another fun and fashionable small crossover model that also aims to be versatile, capable and practical too. It's a likeable little slice of Americana in this growing segment. All-purpose SUVs come in many shapes and sizes these days. Everything from large, sturdy rock hoppers to, well, something like this. Chevrolet's small SUV crossover model, the Trax. Here's a manufacturer that knows a thing or two about SUVs, with a history in making the things that goes all the way back to their Carriol Suburban of 1935. Today, the company has arguably the widest range of SUVs of any maker, or at least it does in the US, where Equinox, Traverse, Tahoe and Suburban models all vie for showroom space. It's a little different this side of the Atlantic, where the Bowtie brand has for years restricted buyers in this segment to its Korean-built mid-sized Captiva 5 or 7-seater. All that changed in the spring of 2013, when that car was joined by this smaller Trax crossover. The Trax, like its near-identical design stablemate, the Vauxhall Mocha, offers a trendier and more affordable way for a small, fashionable family to get a foothold in the growing soft-roading market segment. All so-called crossover models claim to do that, be they cars like Nissan's Qashqai or Peugeot's 3008 that are based on family hatchbacks, or more compact models like Nissan's Duke or Skoda's Yeti based on smaller super minis. The Trax sits in the smaller of these two crossover categories, but offers a bit more power and space than you'll find in many of its direct rivals. It's certainly a more interesting alternative to that focus size family hatch you may have been considering. But does it really stack up as a realistic day-to-day -day family choice? Let's find out. Small crossover models like this one are really all about their high seating positions, their trendy Sloan Street styling and the optional possibility they may offer of off-road shenanigans. As for ride and handling, well, buyers in this segment don't tend to prioritise that, so Chevrolet hasn't prioritised it either. It's been no surprise then to find that the Chevy isn't quite as sharp and wieldy as a rival Nissan Duke. The steering's a little vague for that. It also has a rather firm ride, which robs it of the kind of big SUV polish you get in, say, a comparable Skoda Yeti. Having said all that, what the Trax can offer is a decent compromise between these two extremes that I'd expect will adequately satisfy most potential buyers. Under the bonnet, there are three main engine options, the most affordable, as ever, being the least desirable of the trio. The two-wheel drive only 115 PS petrol 1.6 litre variant, which manages the rest to 62 mile an hour sprint in 12.3 seconds on the way to 108 miles an hour. Unfortunately, with only 155 newton meters of torque, it needs to be rowed along a little with the gear lever, a stick that only offers you five speeds. A better bet for petrol people is the Trax that I'm driving here, the 140 PS 1.4 litre turbo. Rest to 60 miles an hour in the two-wheel drive model occupies just 9.5 seconds en route to 122 miles an hour, so it's usefully more rapid, and there's a healthier 200 newton meters of torque. Plus, there's a standard six-speed manual gearbox at this level, and you can choose between either two or four-wheel drive. The most practical engine choice, though, is the one that most buyers will probably select, the 130 PS 1.7 litre VCDI diesel, which, though rather noisy, is capable of a top speed of around 116 miles an hour and a rest to 62 miles an hour in about 10 seconds. You get all the main mechanical choices with this unit, which means that, as well as a four-wheel drive option, you can also specify your car with the alternative of a six-speed automatic transmission. Perhaps more importantly, choosing the diesel engine gives you a lot more pulling power, 300 newton meters in all. Every Trax is theoretically capable of towing a brake trailer of up to 1,200 kilograms in weight, but this diesel variant is the only one that'll really take such a task in its stride. 
If that's the kind of thing you're going to be doing regularly, then you'll want to specify the all-wheel drive system, one of those fully adaptive setups that reacts to the surface that you're driving over. So there are no knobs and levers, just a set of sensors that constantly monitor things like your steering angle, the wheel speeds, the throttle pedal position and the engine revs. Based on all this data, the electronic torque transfer device that controls the whole setup will always know when extra traction is required, at which point it will automatically and seamlessly send up to 50% of the engine's torque from the front to the rear axle. That's particularly useful during mild off-road use, of course, during which you may also have an opportunity to appreciate the benefits of an ESP stability control system that's cleverer than most. Built into it is a hill start assist set up to get you up steep slopes from which you can descend using a hill descent control system that'll keep the car at a constant speed as you slither to the bottom. Thanks to the rather restricted ride height of just 157 millimeters, I can't imagine too many Trax owners putting this technology to the test. Many more though will find themselves appreciating the all-wheel drive system's advantages during high-speed cornering, given that it can be activated to prevent wheel spin in just a fraction of a second. The Trax is a confident looking thing with a front end dual port grille that instantly marks it out as a Chevrolet, complete with trademark center positioned bow tie badge. A rugged, well planted stance is emphasized by bold, powerful wheel arch flares and a raked windscreen. There's also a rearward swept roofline flowing back into a roof spoiler and muscular rear haunches set off on plusher models like this one by a rear skid plate. Though super mini based like a rival Nissan Duke, the underpinnings here come from Chevrolet's Aveo, this car feels like a larger, more substantial design, which in many ways it is, nearly as big inside as a family hatch style crossover like Nissan's Qashqai. Take a seat inside and the three-spoke leather trim steering wheel I have here feels good to hold, though the instrumentation you view through it looks a little odd. Instead of the conventional twin-dialed arrangement you get on this car's design stablemate, the Vauxhall Mocha, there's a circular analog rev counter. To the left, curiously impinged upon by a square blue-lit LCD speedometer display to the right. It's almost as if the Chevy designers wanted to be different for the sake of being different. Where the track scores over the Mocha in my book though is in its far cleaner and simpler centre console arrangement that's much easier to use and is topped off by the neat MyLink connected radio infotainment screen that's fitted to most models. MyLink is one of the things that would really sell me this car, enabling as it does information to be projected from your smartphone onto the large 7-inch high-resolution full-color touchscreen. Phone books, personal playlists, photo galleries, even videos. You can pair up to five smartphones simultaneously into the system, and if amongst these is one of the more up-to-date iPhones that uses voice-activated Siri technology, then you'll be able to tell the screen what you want it to do, be that to make calls, choose a song from your iTunes library, listen to or send text messages, check your appointments, and even ask about sports scores. Besides phones, there's the connectivity to add in almost anything else, be it an MP3 player, an iPod, an iPad, and just about any other music device you can think of. And you can download apps to work on the screen, uh, including a Bringo 3D satellite navigation system that'll be a fraction of the cost of a normal built-in sat-nav, though there will be annual subscription charges to pay. It's certainly pretty clever, enabling you to locate emergency services, find points of interest along your route, use Google local search, and estimate your remaining driving range. Plus, it can even give you eco-driving tips. I'd also want to download the TuneIn app that would enable me to access over 70,000 global radio stations through the MyLink screen, and the Stitcher app that would allow me to stream onto this display my favourite podcasts, radio shows and news programmes.
The only major downside I can see is that my link can only cope with your using one app at any given time, which would be really annoying if you were navigating somewhere with Bringo, but at the same time wanted to be entertained by TuneIn or Stitcher. What else? Well, build quality from the Korean factory seems good, and forward visibility is great thanks to the high-set SUV-style driving position. Over-the-shoulder visibility isn't quite so impressive, though, um, due both to thick rear pillars and side windows that rise towards the rear of the car. The real emphasis, though, is on practicality, with no fewer than 19 storage areas dotted around the cabin, including cubbies in front of and behind the gear lever, a lidded compartment to the right of the steering wheel, and another one on top of the dash, and an underseat storage tray on plusher models like this one. There are also two glove boxes, one of which contains outlets for USB and auxiliary devices that enable discrete connectivity for iPods, smartphones and other electronic devices. In the back, the rear seats benefit from wide opening doors that simplify the fitment of a child seat, though that sharply rising waistline may restrict the view out for smaller occupants. Once inside, there's more uh, space than you'd perhaps expect from something based on a car from the Fiesta class, especially when it comes to headroom. True, if you fold up the cleverly concealed armrest with its integral cup holder and attempt to seat three adults across this rear bench, things would be a little tight, but no more so than in any ordinary Focus or Astra size family hatch. The rear seat row also incorporates a 230 volt 3 pin mains power supply, ideal for game minded kids. As for luggage room, well there's no high boot lip to negotiate and beyond it lies 356 litres of carriage space, about the same as you get in a Mini Countryman but 30% more than you get in a Nissan Juke. An optional cargo organiser box enables you to make the most of the room on offer and there's an extra compartment beneath the floor too. Push forward the split folding rear bench and the tracks really is spacious offering a total capacity of 785 litres or 1370 litres if you load above the window line. To put that into perspective, you get 1,170 litres in a Mini Countryman, just 860 litres available in the supposedly larger Nissan Qashqai, and just 550 litres in a Nissan Duke. There's 1.5 metres of low bay length, and if that isn't enough, then there's the option of a front passenger seat that can fold flat and enable objects of nearly 2.3 metres long to be carried. In other words, this car is a lot more versatile than it might look. So, what will you be paying for this small, trendily styled, five-door little SUV crossover? Well, pricing lies mainly in the 16 to 21,000 pound bracket. Within that, there's a 750 pound premium for petrol buyers who want to make the jump from the entry level 115 PS 1.6 to a comparably trim version of the pokier and more efficient 140 PS 1.4T. Pricing for the sole diesel variant, the 130 PS 1.7 VCDI, starts at around the £19,000 mark, which if you're interested is around £700 more than a comparable petrol 1.4T. Both the diesel and the top petrol variant get the option of all-wheel drive for an extra £1,500, and buyers of the front-driven diesel can also specify a six-speed automatic gearbox for a £1,000 premium. All well and good, but I need to put all of that into perspective in the small SUV crossover market. If you're aware that this car is basically Chevrolet's version of the Vauxhall Mocha, you want to know how those two stack up. The answer is that at entry level, a Trax is around £500 cheaper than its direct Vauxhall equivalent. From there on in though, the Mocha, on paper at least, enjoys a useful price advantage, though exact comparisons are difficult to make as specifications between the two models vary. 
Trax buyers, for example, get the added benefit of a rear view parking camera. Plus, Chevrolet reckons that you'll also be sold by their innovative MyLink connected radio infotainment system. Ultimately, I'd be surprised if once pencils had been sharpened, a Chevrolet dealer couldn't directly match mocker pricing on any given derivative. Aside from the Mocha, the other car that springs most readily to mind in this market segment is the one that started it all, Nissan's Duke. But comparisons here are even harder to make. First, because, as Chevy points out, a Duke is a slightly smaller car. And secondly, because only one of the Duke's available engines, the 117 PS 1.6 litre petrol unit, is directly comparable to a Trax power plant. For the record, such a 1.6 litre Duke will save you around £500 over a 1.6 litre Trax. When it comes to diesel power, the Duke's 110 PS 1.5 litre DCI diesel is significantly outgunned by this Chevrolet's 130 PS 1.7 litre VCDI unit, which is why a diesel version of this Chevy is so much more expensive. The choice between the two cars is easier if you want four-wheel drive. There's a single thirsty petrol 4x4 Duke available at around £20,000, but for the same kind of money, you could have a larger, much more efficient petrol or diesel powered all wheel drive tracks. Get beyond Duke and Mocha comparisons, and mostly the news is all good. A conventional crossover model like Nissan's Qashqai is really a bigger car, though it isn't really any bigger inside. And though it costs around the same as this Chevrolet in entry-level diesel form, you get a less powerful engine and other variants are much pricier than their Trax equivalents. So, what else could you consider that would be really directly comparable? Let's go to Yeti, perhaps? After all, at the bottom of the range, uh, an entry-level petrol 1.2 turbo TSI version of that car will cost you the same as a comparably performing 1.6 litre petrol Trax. In the same way, at the top of the range, a 2 litre TDI 110 4x4 diesel Yeti will cost much the same as a diesel all-wheel drive Trax. Between these two extremes, though, the volume Yeti models offer less equipment, power and performance when matched directly against their Chevy equivalents, which is why, in many cases, the Skoda can undercut this tracks on price. It all comes down to what you want. Personally, I think a potential Trax customer would be far more likely to be looking at something like a Mini Countryman. A base 1.6 litre petrol Trax would save you about £1,000 over a comparable 1.6 litre petrol Mini Countryman 1. But further up the range, the two cars are price matched pretty directly. So for petrol people, a Countryman Cooper costs about the same as a Trax 1.4T, while for diesel folk, a Countryman Cooper D costs about the same as a Trax 1.7 VCDI in two or four-wheel drive form. In both cases though, the Mini is the slower and smaller option. And other potential rivals? Well, you could talk to your Ford dealership about their EcoSport model, a car you can expect to be directly priced against this one. I'd also put forward the underrated Suzuki SX4 Cross, which can generally undercut this Chevy on price, except in 4x4 form, where it's very expensive. The Suzuki's diesel engine is also feebler than the one used in this Trax. Three other potential compact crossover rivals from this segment might also make your short list. Mitsubishi's ASX, Peugeot's 2008 and Renault's Captur. Bear in mind that none of these can match the seats down luggage capacity of a Trax or the power of its 130 PS diesel engine. With the Mitsubishi, the entry-level petrol model price matches Chevrolet's but diesel motoring is much pricier. With the Peugeot and the Renault, the upfront sticker prices are significantly cheaper, but by and large the engines are also significantly less powerful and there's no four-wheel drive option. Again, it all comes down to what you want. Perhaps the most telling comparisons though come when, as many will, you begin to stack this tracks up against something more conventional. 
it won't escape the notice of many potential family Chevrolet buyers that a trendy Trax will cost them only £900 more than an identically trimmed and powered version of the brand's more conventional Cruise family hatchback. If, having considered all of this, you decide that it is indeed a Trax that you actually want, then you'll be pleased to find that whichever of the five-door models you choose, the 1.6-litre petrol two-wheel drive, or either two- or four-wheel drive versions of the 1.4-litre petrol turbo, that's the one I've got here, or the 1.7-litre VCDI diesel, whichever of those you go for, your car will come well-equipped, because even the base LS version comes with 16-inch alloy wheels, auto headlamps, daytime running lights, front fog lamps, privacy glass, roof rails, power front windows, reverse parking sensors, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm, air conditioning, cruise control, a trip computer, Bluetooth phone compatibility, steering wheel controls for a decent quality six-speaker CD stereo with MP3, USB and AUX incompatibility, and Hill Start Assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Most of the range, though, is based around the much plusher LT spec that I have here, recognisable by its larger 18-inch alloy wheels, skid plates at the back, and special door sills. The key interior addition is Chevrolet's innovative MyLink connected radio system, with its 7-inch colour touchscreen display and Siri speech recognition. There's also an auto-dipping rearview mirror, a reverse parking camera, a leather trimmed steering wheel, power for the rear windows, uh, a driver information centre and hill descent control to ease you down sharp inclines. Accessories include the usual roof boxes, ski racks and bike carriers if you want them to make the most of the fact that this car has a 75 kilogram roof low capacity. Bikes can also be carried on an optional carrier that attaches to the trailer hitch. I also want to specify the cargo organiser box to help partition the luggage area. As for safety, well, the structural design is engineered to withstand four times the car's normal weight, and there's tyre pressure monitoring, Isofix child seat fastenings, plus twin front, side and curtain airbags. To hopefully ensure that you'll never have to use any of this stuff, there's all of the electronic assistance you'd expect, including anti-lock brakes with cornering brake control and brake assist for emergency stops, plus ESP stability control and a Stabilitrack system to optimise traction. You also get hydraulic brake fade assist and rollover mitigation. It all justifies the full house, five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. As far as cost of ownership is concerned, I think it would be fair to call this Trax class competitive. As you'd expect these days, a start-stop system is fitted across the range, though only uh, on manual gearbox models, uh, to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. As a result, even the oldest engine in the lineup, the 115 PS 1.6 litre petrol unit, doesn't lag too far behind its 1.6 litre petrol Nissan Duke or Mini Countryman rivals, returning 43.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 153 grams per kilometre of CO2. As for the 140 PS 1.4 litre petrol turbo Trax model that I'm trying here, well, despite the extra power and weight on offer, the figures are actually a bit better, even if, as I have here, you specify your car with four-wheel drive. In that form, the uh, car returns 44.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 149 grams per kilometre of CO2. Get the 1.4T model with front-wheel drive and the respective figures improve to 47.1 miles to the gallon and 139 grams per kilometre. Stacking up even better, of course, is the Trax in 1.7 litre VCDI 130 PS diesel form. Thanks to clean tech technology that optimises combustion control, NOx, nitrogen oxide emissions are reduced and overall efficiency is dramatically improved. 
to the point where the figures for this variant, 62.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 120 grams per kilometre of CO2, get close to those of a Mini Countryman Cooper D that with around 20 PS less, takes well over a second longer to get you from rest to 60. In fact, the returns you'll get in a diesel-powered Trax aren't really very far off those of a much feebler 1.5 litre DCI Nissan Duke. Bear in mind though that specifying a diesel Trax with automatic transmission will exact a heavy penalty, hitting your fuel and CO2 figures by about 15%. For me though, possibly the best package of the bunch is the 130 PS diesel Trax with all-wheel drive. It's way cheaper to buy than many diesel 4x4 rivals, and so equipped, thanks to an all-wheel drive weight penalty of just 65 kilograms, it'll still return 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out a very reasonable 129 grams per kilometer of CO2. Not too much of a premium to pay to enable you to drive confidently to work during the next snowy snap. What else? Um, insurance groups, well they range between 8 and 15 on the 1 to 50 grouping scale. There's a 3 year 60,000 mile warranty with free roadside assistance for the first year. And there's the option of fixed price servicing packages if you want them. We live in an ever more curious world. Not for nothing is adventure tourism now accounting for a quarter of all European holidays. Ours is a society in which people increasingly want to try something different. Like a Chevrolet Trax? Perhaps. This car won't take you through the Serengeti, of course, but it'll bring slightly more of a sense of adventure to the school run and makes an appealing second car family choice. Of course, you could say the same of most contenders in the Nissan Duke dominated compact crossover segment, full of rivals with obvious virtues. But then this Chevrolet has a few notable selling points of its own, with a decent set of engines, clever infotainment technology, and an appearance that's pure concentrated American SUV. There are downsides of course, but they're not game changing ones. It could be better to drive, but it's good enough in this respect for most in its target market. It could be slightly cheaper to buy, but Chevy dealers should be able to help you on that one. Which leaves us with what? A model with an appeal that builds as your interest in it grows. And the latest staging post in Chevrolet's SUV history, a car very much of its time.